Cryon is a man-made material. Um, it's pressed. It's 70% aluminum mineral and 30% epoxy fill. Um, the epoxy fill is there as a binder as well as a agent to add color to the different aluminum minerals. So um, through their process, they, they make this mix of the aluminum mineral and, and epoxy, press it, um, and they get a solid surface that's, the color is, is uh, through and through the entire material. So it can be sanded, finished, cut, etched, routed, and you always have color. So it's resistant to chips and scratches. It can be easily refinished in the field. It comes anywhere from five to 13 millimeter in this application. So basically a quarter inch to a half inch. And in this case, we use the 13 millimeter on the project. So we took on Cryon in our, on our shop floor, it, it, it's, it has to be done in a very clean environment. So uh, our shop is very clean and tidy all the time, but um, because of some of the, the epoxies and, and the materials we use for seaming the Cryon, uh, it added a level of complexity that we really needed to have almost a, a, a laboratory type clean environment when we were doing the gluing and the seaming and sanding of the material, or we ended up getting end up getting kind of particulates and, and different elements from the just the air into that material which in this case was a white material so it's very unforgiving um, if any any dirt or dust gets in there um, from that standpoint so we, we really had to tighten up and, and make sure we had a real clean environment when we were, we were working with the seaming of the cryon. One of the unique things about this product is that it's manufactured in Spain and, and in the past, and in their experience had been used in foreign countries. Um, there's only a couple installations in the United States and most of them are not of this scale. So we had certainly the some of the challenges with language barriers and construction methods and um, exchanging information that way over a, you know an eight hour time difference when we first got involved. So we felt it was really you know important that we, we went over to Spain, got to see the factory, got to see how the, the product is made, got to see how it's installed. We went through training. Myself and our lead installer, uh, our super general superintendent, went over to Spain and, and, and spent three days with the folks from Porcelanosa that make Cryon. And they, they showed us everything that they, they could um, in, in, for, in terms of how to make it, how to fabricate it, how to uh, seam it, how to finish it, and how to install it. Um, so we, we got all the information we could from them, learned some of the tricks uh, of the trade and, and how to deal with some of the things that were really ultimately instrumental in us being able to execute this, this uh, project. We took uh, uh, some cloud points of the flat vertical walls, the staircase, the escalator, uh, and then the floor and the soffit of everything imported that into our model and then we had basically parameters or constraints of where that the cryon and the subframing um, had to exist. So we were able to take those points and verify those and then model within those constraints. So we, we made sure that everything when it got to the site, it fit in the way it was supposed to fit and there wasn't any more field, verifica field verification or field alteration of the, of the unitized panels themselves or the cryon. Using our process of digitally defined fabrication and really going through an extensive 3D modeling effort and building this intelligent BIM model and getting good data from the site for field verification, for cloud points and things like that, we ultimately streamline our entire operation, make it much more efficient. We can control a lot of our labor and efficiencies in our shop, on the floor, with our CNC equipment, and then in our in, in the past, we've done a lot of studies on this, and it actually shortens our duration of field install by quite a bit. Um, that's usually where most of our costs are, are accounted for on most projects, and, and if we can reduce a lot of the risk of, of cost overruns and, and surprises by not having as much field work, we can make this a, a much more efficient process and ultimately um, drive the cost of this whole entire thing down and, and make it much more affordable. What's perceived to be rather expensive is actually can be pretty affordable if you go through the process from start to finish and really put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, when we take on a project of this nature, um, the, the exact geometry, the precision, 
all the the coordination with the design team and the contractor are ex are completely invaluable. I mean, they're they're so important. We can't speak enough to how how much effort needs to be put in place very early on to make sure that we have a a a good fundamental design concept, a good approach towards the the fabrication, the erection, the you know the finishing. All of the coordination with other trades and contractors and structural uh, issues that might come up, understanding all of those things, um, we just couldn't put enough effort into that. So I think a very tight design and contracting team is, is really important to make sure that we're, there's a free-flowing exchange of information and digital data. Um, I think in our experience, paper drawings are, 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 aren't a lot of they don't add a lot of value to a process like this. We're better off working in a digital environment, exchanging information back and forth digitally to, to really verify that the concept is gonna work, um, it's gonna fit the space, it can be executed at a high level with a high degree of precision. And really that's, I think, it, it, the fundamental of, of working like this is collaboration and teamwork.